Let's take a look at the causality property of a system, especially how to determine whether or not a system is causal. Let's begin with the system T. This system has an input sequence X of N and an output sequence Y of N. The system operates on the input X to produce the output Y. Well, let's investigate this concept of causality. Let me use a thought experiment here where I duplicate my system, but now subject that system to two different inputs, x1 and x2, and these provide two different outputs, y1 and y2. Let's further assume that x2 is equal to x1 up to some time n0. After that point, x2 is not equal to x1. Think of it this way, x2 tracks x1 identically up to the time n equals n naught, and then it diverges thereafter. The question then is when we evaluate both of these outputs at that time n naught, that is, if we look at y2 of n naught and compare that to y1 of n naught, if they are in fact the same for all possible choices of n naught, then the system is said to be causal. And this is a biconditional statement. If we know that the system is causal, then we know this statement for y2 and y1 is, is valid. Essentially, we're trying to set up a thought experiment here to determine whether or not the system uses future inputs. If it does not, then it is causal. Let's take a look at our first example. I have n multiplying the sum of values of x summed from k equals minus infinity to the time step n. All right, here's our thought experiment structure. x1 passes through this system to produce n times the sum, k equals minus infinity up to n, x1 of k. And in a similar way, x2 produces this result. Now we want to, we want to evaluate these two outputs at n equals n naught. And things will be a little easier if we write out a few terms. This output sequence has been going on ever since minus infinity, and it's a summation. So we're saying we've been summing values from k equals minus infinity up to 1 just before n naught, so that's why I'm writing n naught minus 1, times x1 of the previous input sample, that's x1 of n naught minus 1, plus, stopping now at k equals n naught, we would have this term. On the lower track, x2 would have the similar form. So we compare these two. Are they equal for all possible choices of n naught? Well, the forms certainly look the same, and we see that as long as we are considering values below or equal to n naught, then x1 and x2 are the same. So we see that yes, indeed, y1 of n naught is equal to y2 of n naught for all possible choices of n naught. Therefore, we conclude the system is causal. Again, another way of thinking about this is we say that we never saw a reference or a forward reference to this area where x2 and x1 are not the same. Let's try this out on a second example. In this case, the system operator says x of 2n. y1 is x1 of 2n, and x2, or y2 rather, is x2 of 2n. Uh, as we did in the last example, let's evaluate the sequence near 
the time step n equals n naught. So we have a sequence that's been running for some time. And I'll first take this at the time step n equals n naught minus 2. So we're 2 behind the time n naught. I'll substitute in n naught minus 2 wherever I see n. Now at the next time step, n equals n naught minus 1, we have this result. And then finally, where we're, we are trying to end up, end up at n equals n naught, we would have x1 of 2 n naught. And the sequence certainly can continue beyond that point. But we're, we're just mainly interested in this area right around n naught. Same idea would apply for x2. Again, our question is, are all of these values equal, at least up to this point where n is equal to n naught? Let me consider uh, this first time index that I've written down. We, we need to establish is every time index less than or equal to n naught. That's the areas where x1 and x2 are equal. Let me, I'll, I'll phrase it using an phrase the question as an inequality. Let's do a little bit of algebra here. And not as common. This changes into one half. Multiply both sides by two to clear that fraction. So now the question is, is n not always less than or equal to four? And the answer would no would be no, it's not always. We can choose any possible value of n naught that we like. Let's take a look at another place just to emphasize this point. Here we ask the question, is 2n naught always less than or equal to n naught? Well, at least for positive values, we see no, this is not the case. 2 is not less than or equal to 1. So from these two examples, we see that y1 of n0 is not equal to y2 of n0 for all possible choices of n0. Therefore, t is not causal. All right, that's the system property of causality.